Welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're going to learn another task that the pre-trib raptured bride is going to be doing once she's in her fancy glorified body and serving the left behind church. And this study is going to be from John chapter 13 from the New American Standard Bible. So if you want to grab your Bible, I think you're going to enjoy going through that chapter with us. But it starts out, I'm going to start with verse 2. During supper, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, got up from supper and laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. Okay, now, you guys are going to want to keep your eyes on Jesus. Slip into this entire scene, and it's, of course, the Last Supper. And as we are reading the prophetic layer of scriptures, we're reading this as if the bride has already been raptured at pre-trib. And now we're going to see this incredible encounter that Jesus has with his disciples, namely Peter. And the, their exchange, the things they say to each other, is so revealing. But now you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Look at verse 4. He got up from supper laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. Now that word girded is he tied it on himself tightly. Verse 5, Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wash them with the towel which he was girded. All right. There's something about this towel that's been girded to him because it's now been brought up twice in just a few verses here. So this is the Holy Spirit telling us, heads up, this is unusual. I mean, after all, I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. My family watches me work and putter and do things in the kitchen. Why, when they are describing something, would they keep mentioning a towel? So this is telling us that an insignificant detail really is very significant. And we want to figure out what is going on here. So verse 6, he came to Simon Peter and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Verse 7, Jesus answered and said to him, what I do, you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. Okay, something happens where Peter is not comprehending the situation. And in this type and shadow, the disciples are the left behind church. Saved, because the, the rapture has nothing to do with a person's salvation. Jesus has promised eternal life through his shed blood on the cross. Now the rapture, that's a reward. Salvation is free, rewards are earned, the rapture is a reward. So in this situation, that all the disciples are left behind. So we need to really watch how we interpret the types and shadows because, for instance, the disciples, sometimes all 12 of them are portrayed as the bride. Sometimes only a couple of them are the bride and the rest of them are the left behind church. Sometimes all of them are portrayed as the left behind church. So you have to really prayerfully study these passages and seek the Holy Spirit to figure out the types and shadows. Okay, so in verse 7, Jesus is telling the church right now, you're reading this passage and you don't understand, but after the pre-trib rapture of the bride has happened and you're left behind, oh yeah, then you're going to understand. In fact, think about how much Bible prophecy will become so clear once the bride is gone, because now that just explains a whole lot of prophecy. Huh, that there is a pre-trib rapture, huh, that not Everybody goes up in it who is saved. Verse 8, Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. You know, that is really a severe statement. 
that's a real eye-opener, and Peter is kind of taken aback by then. And so the next thing Peter says is a response to that very severe statement Jesus made. So verse 9, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. So you can just see this now sarcastic because he's like this pendulum swinging back and forth. Jesus answered in verse 10, he who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. So now we hear Jesus, he's he speaks in riddles. He inserts things that is like, why did he say that? That doesn't flow with the conversation. So he does this in this passage. He's telling Peter, you're completely clean. You've bathed, uh, but not your feet. Okay, so feet are symbolic of a person's walk. So you can be a Christian and you, we are walking on this filthy earth every day. We're coming into contact with sin and we are affected by sin. We are influenced by the world. And sometimes we just kind of go with the world for a little bit and then we snap ourselves out of it and we, we repent, but we've got to be continually washing that dirt off of our feet. And so, but in verse 10, Jesus is saying, you're all bathed. You're all clean. I just need to wash all of your feet, but yet not all of you. Jesus is referring to Judas. And Jesus is telling us that there are Judas types in the church right now on this side of the pre-trib rapture of the bride. In the same way, there are going to be Judas types on the other side of the rapture in the church. So this is a prophecy that Jesus continues to give. And now what we found interesting once Angeline pointed it out was something that Peter said in verse nine. He mentions his feet, his hands, and his head. And she brought it to our attention that the church are the feet of Christ. The bride are his hands, but Jesus is the head. So this is why Jesus says, no, you're the left behind church, you're saved, you've bathed, I just need to wash your feet. Let me wash your feet or else you have no part in me. You have no part in the church. So everybody in the left behind church is going to have to go through this feet washing process. So they did not receive the pre-trib rapture of the bride because they had too much of the world's dirt on their feet in their walk, and it must be washed off. They are listening to ear-tickling Bible prophecy teachers, because there are a lot of them. I listened to a video last night where the title of the video is, Will Backsliding Christians Be Raptured? And then the very popular pastor went on to say, oh yes, you can be in the middle of sin, you can be a backslider, you can be sleeping around, and you'll be raptured on that day. <laughs> okay, ear tickling, ear tickling, red flags should go up because Jesus keeps saying, watch yourselves, watch. Okay, verse 13, Jesus goes on to say, you call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. Think about this. Why didn't Jesus say, you call me prophet and Lord? You call me shepherd and Lord. You call me the door and Lord. Because Jesus has gone through these lessons with his disciples by the time we get to the Last Supper. But Jesus singles out teacher along with Lord master. And this is very important to this particular passage, what's going on here. Look at verse 18, and this is going to become far more clear why Jesus brings up that he's their teacher. Verse 18, I do not speak of all of you. I know the ones I have chosen, but it is that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats my bread has lifted up his heel against me. Okay, so now We've gone a little farther down in John chapter 13, and Jesus is again bringing up the Judas spirit, Judas, and informing the left behind church 
there will be traitors after the rapture in the church, just like there are traitors in the church now. Okay, verse 19, Jesus says, from now on, I am telling you before it comes to pass, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am He. Okay, something is going to happen. He's alluding to the 12 disciples that something is going to happen, and then from that point on, He will always tell them things before they come to pass. Now, right now, many people think that He is telling us everything before it comes to pass. Well, that's not true. If, if this were true, we would have known uh, when that bad flu was going to break out. Okay, if he was going to tell us now everything that was coming to pass, we would have a whole lot more information. But right now, we see things a little bit unclear. We're not getting every download from Jesus, but Jesus is telling them, Something is going to happen, and from that point on, I'm going to tell you things before it comes to pass, so that you will believe that I am He. All right, so now we're going to look at the prophetic layer of this verse, 19. After the bride is raptured, she will be informing the left behind church what is going to happen before it happens. This is so that they can evangelize more effectively so that those they are evangelizing will believe their testimony and will believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is God, that He is their King, their Redeemer, their Savior, their Lamb. Because all this other crazy stuff is going to be going on. So it's after that pre-trib rapture, that the left behind church, they start being told things before they come to pass, so that when it does occur, they believe the testimony of the left behind church. Because it is during that first half of Daniel's 70th week, that will be the great white harvest. There will be more people coming into the knowledge, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ than any other time in history. There's going to be more Jews coming into and being grafted into the church than any other time in church history. Many Jews came into the church. They kicked off the church on the day of Pentecost. It was all Jews that started the church but not all Israel. The rulers did not come into belief. And God is looking for a large enough group of Israel to come into belief so that he can consider the nation of Israel as fulfilling their mandate. I know that's another video. All right, so let's take a look at something we talked about in the last video, video number 189. And John the Baptist said, he who has the bride is the bridegroom. He must increase, but I must decrease. So the reason why Jesus is increasing in glory, in magnitude, in numbers of souls coming into the church, it's because the bride, the raptured bride, is at the side of Jesus in her glorified body. So she is getting things from heaven, direct from the Holy Spirit, and she is coming, I think, on her white horse. That's, you know, when, when people come back with Christ at His second advent, that will not be the first time they have been on their white horse. So I think the bride comes back on her white horse. That's her mode of transportation as she's going from heaven to earth, heaven to earth, to serve the left behind church in her glorified body. We know that Satan has a counterfeit, white horse. That's nothing new. He has a counterfeit for everything. So of course, if we're teaching that, that 
he's on a, that Satan is on a white horse and that's a counterfeit. Well, of course, he's counterfeiting the real thing. So I think it's the bride on the white horse. Okay, moving on. <laughs> now, we need to watch and listen to what Jesus says while washing the feet of the left behind church with the water and the towel. He says in verse 20, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. So he is telling the left behind church, you need to receive the bride because she's going to be washing your feet. She is the towel that is going to be washing your feet in the water of the word. She's going to be washing the dirt off your feet because you've got too much dirt, the world's dirt on your feet right now. That's why you didn't go up pre-trib. So the bride will be coming back to the left behind church in her glorified eternal body, but looking like just a random person, just like Jesus manifested himself to the two men on the road to Emmaus, and then later to the entire group that evening. He was wearing different garments. He was disguised because he has many changes of clothing. All right. So when you have time, you can study Jesus's activities for those 40 days after his resurrection, when he made appearances to the disciples because he was wearing different garments and it's just different disguises, different activities. So too, the bride is going to be coming back. She's got changes of clothing as well. She, they're laying for her right now up in heaven, and she's going to continue serving the way she is now. She's going to be cleaning up the doctrine of the church. She's going to be cleaning up their Bible prophecy interpretations because there's many prophecy interpretations that you need to wade through. You've got to uncover every rock. Is this true? Well, if this is true, what does it do to this verse? Well, if this interpretation is true, what does it do to that verse? And it's a process and it takes time and prayer and sitting at the feet of Christ like Mary. But Martha was so busy serving in all of her programs and doing stuff, she was too preoccupied. So we're being Mary's right now and we're sitting at the feet of Christ. So the bride is not looking for visible signs of her rapture because she has the word. The bride does not get signs. She hears the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, the, the church, they're all looking at signs. Um, they're looking at eclipses and deciphering the meanings of movies and Simpsons cartoons trying to find a rapture date. The bride, mm -mm, she's in the words, studying the types and shadows that are hidden in the prophetic layer of Scripture. She's rereading the Bible as if the bride is gone. That's where she's getting her clues because then the Holy Spirit is going to publish it in her spirit when her rapture day is. She might only get a couple of hours. She might only get a day. She might get three days. We don't know, but the bride is so familiar with the voice of the Holy Spirit teaching her and pointing out these prophetic details that are hiding under the surface like a hidden treasure. She's so familiar with the Holy Spirit's voice. She's going to hear him tell her when she's going up because the date is not encrypted in the scriptures. So the bride gets her warnings her instructions, her discernment, her knowledge, understanding, and wisdom from the scriptures. We don't get it from movies, eclipses, blood moon series. Okay, none of that. That's not for the bride. There will be visible signs before the mid-trib rapture of the church. They get visible signs. The bride, no. She's maturing, all right? The bride loves the word. She promotes the word. She exalts the word. She is working to make the word of God famous, Jesus. 
This is why she's qualified to wash the dirt off the feet of the left behind church. If you are a backslidden Christian, you are not qualified to be the towel that uses the water to wash the dirt off the left behind church. You have too much dirt on your feet to be washing the dirt off others. This is why the bride is in daily repentance. And I get a lot of flack for that, saying that we need to be in daily repentance. But the bride understands this. She understands why we are in daily repentance. So God will not rapture at pre-trib a backslidden Christian because they don't have correct doctrine. They don't have the fear of God. They don't have accurate Bible prophecy interpretations in order to tell the left behind church what is going to happen before it happens. Bride, as you are preparing yourself, just understand, we're going to have a, a hidden ministry, so to speak, kind of like our ministry is hidden now. The church does not know who the bride is right now. They don't recognize us. God does not want them to. But we're going to have a very humble ministry serving the left behind church. So this is why we need to make sure of our doctrine and make certain that our prophetic interpretations are accurate. All right. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.